White Teeth by Zadie Smith. White Teeth is a 2000 novel by the British author Zadie Smith. It focuses on the later lives of two wartime friends. The Bangladeshi Sam Adikbal and the English Monarchy Jones. And their families in London. The novel is centered around Britain's relationships with people from formerly colonized countries in Africa, Asia, and the Caribbean. The book won multiple honors, including the 2000 James Tate Black Memorial Prize for Fiction. The 2000 Whitbread Book Award in Category Best First Novel. The Guardian First Book Award, the Commonwealth Writers First Book Prize, and the Betty Trask Award. At the center of this invigorating novel are two unlikely friends, Archie Jones and Sam Adikbal. Hapless veterans of World War II. Archie and Sam Ad and their families become agents of England's irrevocable transformation. A second marriage to Clara Bowden. A beautiful, albeit tooth-challenged, Jamaican half his age. Quite literally gives Archie a second lease on life, and produces Irie. A knowing child whose personality doesn't quite match her name, Jamaican for no problem. Sam adds late in life arranged marriage, he had to wait for his bride to be born. Produces twin sons whose separate paths confound Iqbal's every effort to direct them, and are renewed. If selective, submission to his Islamic faith. Set against London's racial and cultural tapestry. Venturing across the former empire and into the past as it barrels toward the future. White teeth revels in the ecstatic hodgepodge of modern life. Flirting with disaster, confounding expectations, and embracing the comedy of daily existence. Plot Summary On New Year's Day 1975, Archie Jones A 47-year-old Englishman whose disturbed Italian wife has just walked out on him, is attempting to commit suicide by gassing himself in his car when a chance interruption causes him to change his mind. Filled with a fresh enthusiasm for life, Archie flips a coin and then finds his way into the aftermath of a New Year's Eve party. There he meets the much younger Clara Bowden. A Jamaican woman whose mother, Hortense, is a devout Jehovah's Witness. Clara had been interested in the unattractive, antisocial Ryan Tops. But their relationship falls apart after Ryan becomes a member of the Jehovah's Witnesses. Archie and Clara are soon married and have a daughter, Ari, who grows up to be intelligent but with low self-confidence. Also living in Willstone, London, is Archie's best friend Sam Adikbal. A Bengali Muslim from Bangladesh, the two men spend much of their time at the O'Connell's pub. Archie and Sam had met in 1945 when they were part of a tank crew inching through Europe in the final days of World War II, though they missed out on the action. Following the war, Sam had emigrated to Britain and married Alsana Iqbal, nay Alsana Begum, or Miss Alsana, in a traditional arranged marriage. Sam had is a downtrodden waiter in a West End curry house, and is obsessed by the history of his supposed but unlikely great-grandfather, Mangal Pandey, a Hindu soldier from Uttar Pradesh, not Bengal, who is famous for firing the first shot of the Indian Rebellion of 1857, though he missed. Sam Ad and Alsena have twin boys, Magid and Millet, who are the same age as Iri. Sam Ad in particular finds it difficult to maintain his devotion to Islam in an English life. He is continually tormented by what he sees as the effects of this cultural conflict upon his own moral character. His Muslim values are corrupted by his masturbation, drinking, and his affair with his children's music teacher, Poppy Burt Jones. In an attempt to preserve his traditional beliefs, he sends 10-year-old Magid to Bangladesh in the hope that he will grow up properly under the teachings of Islam. From then on, the lives of the two boys follow very different paths. To Samad's fury, Magid becomes an anglicized atheist and devotes his life to science. Millet, meanwhile, pursues a rebellious path of womanizing and drinking, as well as harboring a love of mob movies such as The Godfather and Goodfellas. Angry at his people's marginalization in English society Millet demonstrates against Salman Rushdie in 1989 and eventually pledges himself to a militant Muslim fundamentalist brotherhood known as 
Keepers of the Eternal and Victorious Islamic Nation, Kevin. The lives of the Joneses and Iqbals intertwine with that of the white, middle-class Chalfans. A Jewish Catholic family of Oxbridge educated intellectuals who typify a distinctive strain of North London liberal trendiness. The father, Marcus Chalfton, is a university lecturer and geneticist working on a controversial future mouse project in which he introduces chemical carcinogens into the body of a mouse and is thus able to observe the progression of a tumor in living tissue. By re-engineering the actual genome and watching cancer's progress at predetermined times, Marcus believes he is eliminating the random. The mother, Joyce Chalfton, is a horticulturist and part-time housewife with an often entirely misguided desire to mother and heal. Millet as if he were one of her plants. To some extent, the Chalfton family provides a safe haven as they, believe themselves to, accept and understand the turbulent lives of Irie, Magid, and Millet. However, this sympathy comes at the expense of their own son, Joshua, whose difficulties are ignored by his parents. Originally a well-molded Chalfonist, Joshua later rebels against his father and his background by joining the radical animal rights group fighting animal torture and exploitation. FATE. Meanwhile, after his return from Bangladesh, Magid works as Marcus's research assistant on the Future Mouse Project, while Millet becomes further involved in Kevin. Irie, who has been working for Marcus, briefly succeeds in her long hidden attraction to Millet but is rejected under his Kevin inspired beliefs. Irie believes that Millet cannot love her. For he has always been the second son both symbolically and literally, Millet was born two minutes after Magid. Irie makes Magid the second son for a change by sleeping with him right after her romantic encounter of Millet. This causes her to become pregnant, and she is left unsure of the father of her child, as the brothers are identical twins. The strands of the narrative grow closer as Millet and Kevin, Joshua and Fate, and Clara's mother Hortense and the Jehovah's Witnesses all plan to demonstrate their opposition to Marcus's future mouse which they view as an evil interference with their own beliefs. At its exhibition on New Year's Eve 1992, at the Perret Institute, Hortense and the other Jehovah's Witnesses sing loudly in the hallway. Samad goes out to hush them. But when he arrives, doesn't have the heart to make them stop. When he returns, it suddenly strikes him that the founder of the Perret Institute and the oldest scientist on Marcus Chalfon's panel is Dr. Perret, the Nazi he captured during World War II. Enraged that Archie did not kill him all those years ago, Samad runs over and begins cursing Archie. Just then, Millet advances on the table of scientists with a gun. Without thinking, Archie jumps in front of him and takes a bullet in the thigh. As he falls, he knocks over the mouse's glass cage, and it escapes. At the novel's end, the narrator presents us with different end games in the style of television. Magid and Millet both serve community service for Millet's crime, since witnesses identify both as the culprit. Joshua and Irie end up together and join Hortense in Jamaica in the year 2000. Mickey opens up the previously men-only O'Connell's pub to women. And Archie and Samad finally invite their wives along with them. End of the summary.